It is 7 p.m. All right. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, this It's 7 o'clock. It is Friday night. I've decided to go ahead and do my video tonight because I um, wasn't able to do it on Friday. had lots of technical difficulties, but I am hoping, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that tonight we're going to have a successful Facebook Live. Um, I'm going to get this training done. I've been um, practicing for most of the afternoon. So, um, you know, the practice makes perfects, right? So I'm really hopeful that this is going to be um, the first of 10 modules, choosing your niche. There's going to be um, obviously nine more. I'm uh, going to be going out of town this next weekend, so I won't be able to do the next uh, installment of the videos until next week. Um, but I will post as to what that will be. I will get that set up in advance so that, um, so that we can you know, continue on. And if there's any topics that you guys want in this video series, please just ask. And because um, I know there's been some interest in folks learning how to do, um, you know, to, to get creative with text on TikTok, or if you're interested in learning more about how to create content, um, what my process is or anything like that, you know, just, just, um, you know, message me or post it in the group, you know, Hey, can we do a video on this? Uh, likewise, if any of you have skills, now I'm talking to you, Julie Landon, um, you know, like Amazon KDP or something like that, that would be awesome. If you guys would do a live in the group, that would be fantastic. Um, I know that a lot of you do have um, some pretty advanced skills in some areas. So think about it. Um, you know, it's just going to add to the, um, to the knowledge in the group and it's just going to help everybody. It's going to help support people, which is really what we want to do. We want to make sure that folks are supported as they're, um, either they're going through the 15 day business builder challenge or they're learning on their own, or they've already gone through the challenge and they want supplemental training. Um, and that's what this, this group is all about. So social cognition, uh, it works, it's great. It's what people, um, how, how humans learn best. So I'm gonna get started. This training is called Choosing Your Niche, right? And why it's so important. So I'm gonna do something kind of um, old school, I guess, if you wanna call it that. I am actually going to use a PowerPoint because it helps me to kind of keep my thoughts organized. Um, you know, I know everybody hates PowerPoints, but you know, um, it, it really kind of helps me solidify my thoughts and, um, I can go in and out of the PowerPoint, but, um, I think this is hopefully going to be, um, work, work really well for you guys. All right, here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and play from the start and I want, yeah. I think this is it. I think I don't want, I don't want presenter view. All right. Um, so why it's so important to get choosing a niche right. Um, now I put this chapter first in, in the series, the 10 modules, because I really believe that this is the most critical first step that you can take at being successful at sales. Um, you know, if you don't get it right the first time, don't worry about it. I mean, you can always choose another niche, but being able to generate sales, you know, that, that first critical step is definitely choosing a niche that you're going to be comfortable with working with for, for a while, really. So you should be knowledgeable about it. You should have some passion for it. And, you know, really it's, it's going to be one that you can provide the most value to your customers to your audience, to, to your target market, whoever that might be. Um, and that really is, is the key thing. Is there a market for it? And can you provide value to that market through the knowledge that you have, the experience that's, experiences that you've had, and the passion that you have for it? Um, so, and this is gonna be true, guys, of whether you're going into affiliate marketing whether it's an online business, a physical business, bricks and mortar business, whatever, choose wisely. You need to have something that, that's going to, A, have, you have a lot of passion for it, and B, that there's going to be a market for it. And there's ways of figuring that out. 
Um, you can have more than one niche, right? But um, it should be something that shouldn't be too broad or too narrow. Um, so if it's, if it's too broad, uh, like we're gonna talk about the different types of evergreen niches, but if it's too broad, like you're just in wealth and finance and you're kind of all over the place, right? You're talking about crypto one day and Forex the next day. And you know, the day after that, you're talking about um, investing in the stock market or investing in real estate. Um, people aren't gonna know what your, what your niche is. They're not, they're not gonna know what your focus is. So the more focused you can be, um, it is the better off you're gonna be. On the other hand, if you're too narrow, you're gonna restrict who is going to be interested in whatever product that it is that you're marketing. So not too broad, not too narrow. You know, it's kind of like the Goldilocks thing. You know, this is just right. So you wanna make sure that you kind of hit that sweet spot. And the truth is, is that if you market to everyone, you market to no one. So that's the key thing, either marketing to to, to few people or too many choose and niche down and that's going to be my next topic here actually the big three so so these are the big three evergreen niches that you could possibly choose from and the first one health and wellness right so that's going to include fitness um and then you can even niche down from that it could be um you know let's say you are doing um you know meditation uh, fitness, you know, like yoga or Pilates, things that are going to require some mindfulness. Uh, you might be into nutrition, so you are um, selling, you know, nutritional supplements or, you know, just just basic. You know, here here are the things that you need to be health, be a healthy vegan, right? So, what kind of nutrition do you need? Uh, cooking and baking, supplements, obviously supplements, weight loss. Uh, weight loss is huge. You can you can niche down even further into weight loss, um, and you know and choose a, and choose a specific target market. Medical issues, um, lots lots to do in health and wellness. Health and wellness is is such a huge hugely profitable niche, um, and I I very often will go to ClickBank and show um, you know the uh, health and wellness uh, niche in ClickBank and how many products there are and how profitable they are. Uh, and then the next one is wealth and finance, and that's going to include make money online. That's my niche, um, digital currency, crypto, NFTs, uh, stock and commodity investing, real estate, legal. Um, and then I'm sure there's others. I just can't think of them right off the top of my head. And then there's relationships, and that's going to include dating, marriage, children's, uh, children, pets, um, you know, any issues that go along with relationships. So, um, so those are your big three evergreen niches, meaning that uh, there's always going to be a market for something in these, in these niches. Now, obviously you're not gonna just choose relationships, right? You're gonna niche down, and you could niche down even farther into a specific target markets within any of those. And again, I, well, you know, I, I, I'm, it's like beating a dead horse, but you want to make sure that you niche down from a broader market and a sub niche, but don't go too far so that you still have a larger population to market to, and it'll be easier to create content. Um, like for example, if you niche down from a broader niche like health and fitness to keto diets, and then you niche down from there to vegan keto diets, and then with the target market of single women over 50, well, you run the risk of excluding a large segment of your population that could buy your products. So unless you know for certain that there's a big market with lots of buying power, um, you need to stay broad enough so that you have an easier population to market to. Um, as I'll explain later and, and probably in another training, you're gonna need tens to, tens to hundreds of thousands of people to market to. Not everybody's gonna buy your product. So remember, like in a funnel, you know, you're gonna have your target market up here. There's a lot of people here, but then as your funnel narrows, you're gonna exclude more people until you get down to the, you know, your hot market, your, you know, the, those hot leads that are gonna actually buy your product. Um, you wanna make sure that you have enough people to market to initially. Um, you know, it's also going to be easier to write content when the niche is not too broad or too narrow. 
so um, so this is a little exercise that you can try to nail down your choice of a niche. So you can either do this right now as I'm talking, or you can um, you know save this video and you can try this later on. You can do this you know tomorrow, later on tonight. Um, you know, but give yourself a chance to do it. Now, when I did it, I think I filled uh, three pages full. It was, it was kind of amazing to me. And I, I should show you guys um, the pages that I had, and I'm and I'm not finding them right now. I know they're in this notebook, but um, I I amazed myself how many pages that I filled. Anyway, I will come back to that. Uh, so first, get a piece of notebook paper or open a new document on your computer. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to brainstorm all of the jobs you've ever had and list the skills, both hard and soft, that you developed because of those jobs. So hard skills are going to be things like, uh, you know, learning how to use a tool or um, learning how to, to um, do a specific um, operation or um, learning how to operate some machinery or you know weld or stuff like that um, so if whatever those hard skills are write those down and then some of the soft skills too soft skills are things that that you learn kind of um, as a hidden curriculum like how to communicate well how to write well things like that so if you worked as a waitress you probably learned a lot about food service a lot about presentation um, maybe learned a little bit about cooking. You probably learned a little bit about, um, you know, how the, the, the restaurant business is run. But you also learned about customer service, communication, listening skills, and of course, you know, basic computational skills if you were adding everything up by hand. That's what I used to have to do when I was, when I was a waitress back in the, you know, the Stone Ages. Um, then, after that, you're going to write down all of the educational experiences that you've had um, and some of the things that you learned through those that you think could possibly be marketable skills. So those are the, the first two things that you should do. So if you went to college, what was your major? What was your minor uh, in school? Did you run, were you running any clubs? Could any of those be used for your niche? Um, any campus organizations? Did you excel in any sports um, or disciplines? So all of those things are things that could possibly prompt you to think about, oh, you know, yeah, I did this. Um, that would be a great thing for me to do as a niche. So then the second thing you're going to do is you're going to uh, get a new sheet of paper or just kind of skip down on the page. Write down all the things you've personally struggled with. This could be a problem or many problems that you either found a solution to or are still looking for a solution. Um, so you probably had to do some research to find a solution and this, this has made you kind of an expert in this area. And chances are if you've struggled with this problem, somebody else has too. Uh, maybe you overcame an addiction or lost a lot of weight. Uh, did you go through infertility treatments? Did you go through a divorce? Did you adopt a child or a pet? These are powerful niche markets that can be very lucrative if you find the right products to promote and apply your own knowledge and experience to the marketing process. And then on the third sheet of paper, you're going to write down all of your hobbies and interests that you have a fair amount of knowledge and expertise in. Uh, do you like to do DIY projects and crafts around the house? Um, are you, you know, do you like to draw, paint, sing, dance? Um, are you really good working with kids? Um, do you enjoy being in nature? Do you like to garden? Um, you know, so I, there's there's one guy that does um, videos about animals. You know, like you can tell he's got experience about animals, but he's clearly really into different, you know, like like wacky, weird animals. And um, he's an affiliate marketer. So um, again, think about ways that you can develop content and then market these skills to a target market. Um, and again, hold nothing back. You're the only one who's going to get to see this, but the more you uh, fill those pages, the more you uh, write, the more chances you are that you're going to have you know, a large list to choose from. Now, you're going to go through all three lists and choose three to four from each list that you can very easily 
feasibly write 20 to 30 pages or articles of content about or talk about for at least an hour or more straight. Okay, so this is going to be something that you you can write, you can work a lot of content for. Um, which of these selections are the most appealing? Which do you feel most passionate about? Right, transfer these to a four sheet and then place a star next to the top three that you feel you would be most comfortable working with. Okay, so the top three. These are the ones that you feel like, yeah, I can I can really get behind this for you know quite a long time. I think this will be something I can really develop into um, to to a niche. And then, lastly, choose the one that you think will provide the most value to the target audience that you've chosen because of the skills and knowledge and experience that you have, and that's your niche. Again. Let's say down the road you decide, hey, I'm bored with this or this isn't working for me. Save this list and you can always go back to it. You can always go back to it, pull it out, look at it again and say, well, you know, maybe I'll try this next thing that I had written down. So make sure you, you keep that. Okay, next question, next slide. Is there a market for this? So next you got, need to determine whether there's actually a buying public for this niche. Um, so how do you know? How do you know if there's a market? Well, you can Google it using keywords, how many search options are returned. Um, so if there's enough people that will buy the products, these are the people who are going to be looking for the products. So, um, is, you know, is there enough of a market to choose to promote that for the products that you choose to make it worth your while? So the Google Keyword Planner, um, this is a free tool that in interfaces with Google Ads. Um, it will research keywords and in your niche and determine how many people have searched for a particular keyword and how much competition there is in that market. So this is a great tool to use. Unfortunately, you need to be in expert mode, uh, Google mode to use this and actually have a, um, an ad campaign to launch. So it really goes hand in hand with Google AdSense. Um, this will be another training down the road because I want to talk about Google Ads. Um, I personally don't market, I don't pay for ads, but I might start doing that um, as I get into my coaching business. And I think that, um, you know, there's some benefits to doing paid ads that I'll get into at a later date for another training. And I'll show you how this Google Keyword Planner works. Um, there's certain things that I need to have in place before I can show you that. Um, but that would be a great thing to learn how. And, and one of the things that you want to do um, as you're using this keyword planner is to take note of what keywords there are so that you can create um, ads based on search engine optimization keywords and search engine marketing. That's going to help you to write your bio. It's going to help you to do your headlines, your email marketing, and so on. So you've got, you, you will have built-in um, keywords and SEO into the the, the um you know, the content that you're producing. Okay, so how do you identify a target market? Well, there's three types of really red hot markets and, and these are, you know, positioning yourself in one of these can practically guarantee sales. So the first target market that you should be looking at is folks that are dealing with private problems. So these are things that are embarrassing or painful or things that people just don't talk about. We don't discuss this with polite society. That's the, those are things that fall into this category. Um, it could be something that, you know, is, is just a really hot button issue for somebody. It could be a health issue, but things that we don't normally talk about, but I, I can guarantee you people are Googling these and trying to find solutions for them. And um, so that's a great target market if you're looking for something like that. Um, you know, if you have a pet that has, a, um, you know, like my dog has intervertebrate disc disease, he's fine now, but, but we thought we were gonna lose him in, in, you know, early in the year, last winter, because he lost the use of his legs and they wanted to perform a really expensive surgery on him. And we um, found this program online that, that would do, um, you know, therapy with him. And so we went through this program kind of this course with him and um you know it was it was tough because he had to be crate crated like crate rest for several weeks but but he's fine now 
and he still has a little bit of a of a skip in his in his walk but he's much better now so you know we googled and we looked for things um i would have paid for something because they were wanting seven thousand dollars for the surgery i would have paid for something that would have been less but that would give would have still given us relief so you know when you want to think about products that are going to fit within that category that's going to provide a lot of relief for folks um the second thing is folks that are dealing with emotionally charged problems. This is gonna be things like divorce, adoption, infertility. Those are all examples of emotionally, emotion-laden uh, topics. Folks in these situations, unfortunately, are going to be likely to purchase more readily and spend more money. You're not really taking advantage of this problem. You're, taking, you're, you're actually providing a solution for some of these problems, you know, or helping alleviate some of the problems. So that's the key thing is that thinking about how can you alleviate someone's very emotionally charged problems. And then lastly, folks looking for a particular product. So you've done it. How many times have you gone to Google and you've searched for best fill in the blank, right? So you were looking for a particular type of product like a dishwasher or a car or a lawnmower, and you're trying to narrow down your search and make a decision as to which one you're going to buy. You might even already have one picked out. So you're looking for reviews on that particular product. Reviews are huge. You can do YouTube videos, you can do blogs. Um, blogging and affiliate marketing and YouTube videos and affiliate marketing go hand in hand. And um, so think about how you can create content that way. And that's probably going to be um, you know, your most you're most lucrative because you can choose high ticket products that are going to also pay a good commission. So, um, you know, really, I, I think that, you know, if you position yourself within those three red hot markets, uh, you're going to be successful. Okay, word about your target market. So you want to figure out who your target market is, um, age, gender, you know, when you pick an age, you're not going to pick a specific age. Obviously, you're going to pick an age range because if you pick a specific age, that's narrowing uh, your target market too much. Um, but you also want to consider uh, their financial situation. Did they have a lot of debt? Are they going through a divorce? Are they, um, you know, are they nearing retirement? Are they looking to get out of a nine to five? And then what's their biggest problem? What's their problem that needs to be solved? Remember previously I was talking about, you know, people that have um, particular emotionally charged problems. Those are things that people are looking for solutions for. You can provide that solution. Then what are their short-term goals? Where do they want to be in six months? Where do they want to be in a year? And then long-term, maybe they want to be, um, you know, retired in five years and living on a beach, right? So what is their, what are their goals? Now, also, you want to consider what are their concerns? What could possibly be their objection? What could possibly hold them back from purchasing your products? So you want to think about all of those things in advance and deal with them up front. Um, and there might be other factors too. I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. Um, and uh, I am going to now take questions. Hopefully you guys have some and I'm going to get out of this presentation. Okay. So let me go to and see if anybody's got any questions. Um, I don't see any, there's, there's no questions. Um, but you know, you can always, uh, you know, after you watch this, you could always put some questions forth in, um, in the comment section in this video. Um, so I hope you found this helpful in choosing a niche. I, um, so this is the first, like I said, this is the first module, the first chapter in the series of 10. I'm also going to be posting this to YouTube. So I will be providing a link in, um, in the, uh, in the group, but I hope you found this useful and, um, I will be uh, back a week from tonight. So uh, be looking for another video. The next one is going to be on uh, setting up your domain and what you should purchase in, um, in terms of buying, when you buy your domain, what you should get and what you don't need to get. 
um, depending on you know what your goals are for that domain. So that's going to be the next video. And I hope you guys have a great Monday night. Happy November 1st. And I will see you back here in a week.